This video and the organic chemistry series of videos will cover carboxylic acids, amines, and amines. Now as we begin with the carboxylic acid, uh, it's also called an organic acid. And the general formula for an organic acid is going to be this C double bonded to an O attached to an OH. So the functional group present in a carboxylic acid is going to be the combination of the carbonyl group right here and the hydroxyl group located right here. Together, this is uh, called a carboxyl group, and we call that COOH. Now, it's going to possess properties that are unlike those that are present in aldehydes, ketones, and alcohols. For example, our carboxylic acids tend to have very strong odors, especially if they are a volatile type of uh, organic acid. Uh, we're looking at acids such as acetic acid, which gives that pungent uh, smell associated with vinegar. Now, vinegar only has 3% acetic acid in it, but that 3% is what gives vinegar that odor. Also, butyric acid uh, smells very much like human vomit. It is described as being very obnoxious smelling, and when working with butyric acid, one wants to keep uh, that particular organic acid under a fume hood. Additionally, our carboxylic acids are classified as weak acids, and when we look at carboxylic acids, they tend to be insoluble in water. However, they are soluble in a 5% solution of sodium hydroxide. So a carboxyl group is a functional group that is present in the carboxylic acids and it's a combination of this carbonyl group and this hydroxyl group resulting in a carboxyl group. And the two typical ways that carboxyl groups are drawn out in uh, organic acids would be in this diagram where we can see the carbon double bonded to the oxygen attached to the OH and this right here would be the continuing carbon chain as it moves out or we can see it condensed down to be written as COOH where this is the carbon that is double bonded to the oxygen and here we have the OH again this right here would be the chain continuing out the nomenclature rules for naming carboxylic acid is very similar to the rules for naming other functional groups within organic chemistry. First, one selects the longest continuous chain without backtracking or raising the pin up, realizing that it must include this carboxyl group, and that carboxyl carbon right there will be carbon 1. And then we're going to name that parent chain by using our prefixes for the number of carbons, for using our uh, A-N-E, E-N-E, or, or Y-N-E ending, depending upon whether we have a single, double, or triple bonds. The last E will be dropped with an O-I-C followed by the word acid added. And then any substitutions uh, for any side chains would be added. Now let's look at some examples of how this would play out. When we look at this example right here, we will notice that it is four carbons long and it only has single bonds. So a four carbon with single bonds would normally be called butane. So we would name that with butane dropping the E, adding OIC followed by the word acid. And therefore it is called butanoic acid. With this one right here, and we count, and we have one, two, three, four. So we know we have a butanoic acid, and this is carbon one, and we have carbon two, and we have carbon three with two bromines coming off. So we would name this 3,3-dibromobutanoic acid. Now on this one, we have one, two, three for our longest chain. Here we have a little chain coming off, so we would call this propanoic acid, 
This is coming off of carbon, that's one, carbon two, so that would be a two methyl propanoic acid. And this right here, if we remember this structure right here is a benzene, and so this would be off of carbon one, so we have a benzenoic acid, and this would be carbon one, so we have something on carbon three and five, they're both chlorines, so we would have three, five, dichlorobenzenoic acid. Now with that said, you know, we do use the IUPAC name quite often, but we also have common names that are used with various carboxylic acids. So as we look at the first six, um, as far as the length of carboxylic acid, here we have one carbon, two carbon, three carbons. We would call this one a methanoic acid because of the one carbon present. Here we would call this ethanoic acid, propanoic acid, butanoic acid, pentanoic acid, and hexanoic acid. However, many times common names are used in place of the IUPAC names. For example, when we look at this example here, we rarely will call it methanoic acid. This is known um, by chemists as formic acid. And the uh, F-O-R-M is another prefix for one carbon. So if we think of formaldehyde, then we have an aldehyde with one carbon present. But here we have formic acid. And if you've ever received a sting from an ant and it's blistered up, you have received an acid burn, and that was formic acid. Here we have acetic acid, and acetic acid is what we find in vinegar, and rarely will we call this ethanoic acid. Uh, in a chemistry lab, this would be labeled acetic acid. Um, then we have some of the other common ones we use. This is the one that was mentioned on slide one, the butyric acid. This smells like human vomit. Uh, it really has just an obnoxious, nasty smell to it one that if you ever smell it you'll never forget but do you make a point of writing down some of these common names and if your professor ever uh, uses some of these names in place of the IUPAC then you'll have a reference to go by and just spending just a couple of minutes going back over naming the carboxylic acids if they have another functional group that's present so in this example right here, we're going to count, and we're going to notice that we have, counting through, we have five carbons present. And so we would name that a pentane, single bonds only, but because of this carboxylic acid, we now call this pentanoic acid. You will notice that we also have this hydroxyl group located. Now, we do know that this is carbon 1 right here, so we have that hydroxyl group coming off of carbon 3. And so we would call that 3-hydroxyl pentanoic acid. On this example here, and again, when we count, we would have 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons, so we have a... Um, uh, carboxylic acid located here we have this as a butanoic acid and we will notice that right here and right here on carbon 2 and 3 we have those hydroxyls coming off as functional groups and we would name this 2,3 dihydroxyl butanoic acid. Now on these bottom examples we have the functional groups coming off right here and right here. And so when we count this one up, you'll notice that we have four carbons. And with the four carbons and with that uh, carboxyl group there, we have this as a butanoic acid. And so this substitute right here is known as oxo. It's coming off of carbon four. And so we would call that a 4-oxobutanoic acid. And this is what we're going to see when we see a carboxylic acid that has either an aldehyde or a ketone that's added to it. This one right here is our aldehyde. Right here we have a ketone. And so when we count this one up, we'll again notice that we have four carbons. And so we have that carboxylic acid and we have that um, butanoic acid. But in this case, that double bonded oxygen is coming off of carbon 2. 
this one being our carbon 1, and so we would call that a 2-oxybutanoic acid. Occasionally, one may run across a dicarboxylic acid, and that's where we have the carboxyl group located on each end of our structural formula. So we'll notice that we have a carboxyl group here and we have that carboxyl group here. We still count our longest chain and our longest chain one, two, three, four, so we have a butanoic acid, but because we have two carboxyl groups, we add that prefix di. So we would call this a butadioic acid. Here, if we count, we would notice that we had one, two, three. So three would be a probe. So we know that we have a propanoic acid. But because we have these two carboxyl groups, again, we add the di. So we call that the propane diodic acid. Shifting over from carboxylic acids to amines and amides, uh, both amines and amides are organic based derivatives of ammonia. And so when we look at the difference between an amine and an amide, I wanted to take a moment and go over these structural differences. Now with our amine, you'll notice we have that lone pair of electrons and we have the nitrogen attached to this carbon group right here. Where with an amide, you're gonna notice that we have this characteristic group right here of carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then attached to the nitrogen. So always make sure you know the difference between our amines and our amides. And with our amides, that carbon is going to be double bonded to an oxygen and then attached to the nitrogen. Now as previously stated, amines and amides come from ammonia by replacing the H. So here we have ammonia and right here we have an amine and what we've done is we've replaced the H with a carbon chain. Now here we have the amide and we've replaced the H's with uh, carbon chains. We'll notice that our carbon right here is double bonded to an oxygen and so we can see the difference between our ammonia which was our base uh, amine and amides. Also, when we classify amines, we can classify them by the number of alkyl chains. Now, this classification also works with alcohols. And so when we look at a primary versus a secondary versus a tertiary amine, we look at the nitrogen and we determine how many carbon chains are coming off of the nitrogen. If we have one carbon chain coming off of the nitrogen, then we have a primary amine. Now if this was an alcohol, we would look at the carbon that's attached to the OH and we would determine how many carbons are coming off of the carbon attached to the OH. And it works the same way. Now on this particular amine, you'll notice that we have one, two carbon chains attached to the nitrogen, and that makes that a secondary amine. Here we have one, two, three carbon chains coming off of the nitrogen. That will make this a tertiary amine. Now we can name these by um, common names, and we can also name amines by IUPAC names. With the simple or common names, what we do is we list the alkyl group and then we um, name the word amine. So we have one, two, prefix for two is ethyl. We would call this ethyl amine. On this one, we have one coming here, one coming here. You'll notice that they are both methyl groups. So we would call this a dimethyl amine. On this one right here, we will notice that we have one coming off here, one coming off here, and we have uh, two coming this way. Now we do name these based on alphabetical order. So we'll call this an ethyl for here, dimethyl amine. Based on the IUPAC naming system for amines, we will name the amine based on the longest alkane chain. We will drop the E and add amine to the ending. 
So if we look at this right here, our longest chain is two carbons. We would call that ethane. We would drop the E and call that ethanamine. Here, we would name the longest chain, which would be propane. Now notice here the nitrogen is coming off of carbon 2, so we would call this 2-propane amine. Now if we are looking at secondary or tertiary amines, we're going to name the longest alkane chain, and that's going to be numbered. And then each of the little chains or the alkyl groups that are bonded to the nitrogen will be named as an N alkyl group. So let's look at our first example. This is our longest chain, and so we would name this as a propane amine. We have this little methyl group coming off, and so we would name that as the N-methyl part. And then we need to include where this nitrogen came off of the long chain, which would be carbon-1. So the complete name for this chemical would be N-methyl-1 propyl amine. If we look at our next example, we'll see that our longest chain is four carbons long, and we've got that nitrogen attached at carbon two. So we're gonna call this a two butamine. You'll notice that this nitrogen also has a little chain coming off, and that's a methyl group. So we would call this N-methyl two butamine. Looking at our amides, when we classify amides, we can classify the amides as primary, secondary, or tertiary amides. And we do this very similar to what we did with the amines. We find the nitrogen, and we determine how many carbons are coming off of the nitrogen. If we have the nitrogen attached to one carbon, it's a primary amide. If we have the nitrogen attached to two carbons, it's secondary, and if the nitrogen is attached to three, it is a tertiary amide. Now the IUPAC naming system will be the easiest naming system for you to uh, review over, and when we look at the IUPAC naming system, we are going to name our longest chain, we're going to drop the E and add the word amide. So this would be a methyl amide. This right here would be a propyl amide. Now when we get to our um, secondary and tertiary amides, we're going to name these very similar with our n alkyl being named um, for our little chains that come off of the nitrogen. So if we look at this example right here, our longest chain is two carbons, and so we would call that an ethyl amide. Here we have a little methyl group coming off, and so the name would be N-methyl amide. On this example right here, our longest chain is three carbons long, so we know we have a propyl amide. And then we have this chain coming off of the nitrogen. It is two carbons long, and so we would call that an N-ethyl propyl amide. If we were to look at the amides for benzene, first off, here we have a uh, benz amide, and right here we have that benz amide, but we also have this little chain coming off, and so this would be an N-methyl benz amide. So our IUPAC rules do carry over to our cyclic compounds as well. Finally, I have a mixture of amines and amides on this page with the answers, and uh, it would be a good point for you to stop, review over, and, and ensure that you feel comfortable with uh, naming each of these compounds before you move on to the next video. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, review back over uh, the naming portion of this video, or uh, drop by my classroom for additional help.